Welcome. This video is going to go over Microsoft Access querying and specifically how to filter in those queries. To do this, we're going to go over a few practice problems. Here's the first one. Create a list that displays all cash receipts received by customer number three. Display in the final query these fields in this order. Customer number, the real cash receipt date, and amount. So we're going to open our Pure Guitar database. You'll notice we have our tables listed and we're going to start by creating a query in design view. Now for this one, we're going to need to know about cash receipts. So we're going to put in our table cash receipts. Make that a little bigger. And I like to start with putting in the things that we have to display for our final query. So we're going to start with customer number. We're going to need the real CR date and then the amount. So this query only needs a single table. Now if I run this query, you're going to see I get every single cash receipt for all customers. There's 410 of them. Now what I want is just those received by customer number three. Now down here in the query you have this thing called criteria and it extends for all of the boxes down below and you can keep going and adding more. So the first thing we want to do is just see cash, cash receipts from customer number three. So if I type in a three or I could type an equal and equals three, it's going to go in and filter so all I get are the cash receipts from customer number three. So there's your answer. All I need to do is type in a number three here. Now let's go to the next problem. Show all cash receipts received by customer number 11 that have amounts greater than $10,000. Display in the final query these fields in this order, customer number and amount. So let's go back to my table and what I need to show is customer number and amount. So I'm going to delete that field and I want to show things for customer number 11. So we know how to do that from for the first practice problem. I'll just put in 11 and if I run that you'll see hey customer 11 gave us cash receipts of these different amounts. Now all I want to display is those greater than 10,000. So in querying what I need to do is it has customer number 11 and amounts greater than 10,000. So make sure on this same line I put in 10,000. Now if I put it in like this it's only going to give me exactly. It assumes it's equal. So I want those that are greater than 10,000. So when I run that I end up with four uh, receipts and they're all greater than 10,000. Now I want to pause and show you a few things. Notice if I put in equals I won't get anything back. You might think you did something wrong so be very careful that you, you put in your criteria correctly. Now also if I put this on a separate line it's going to be an or. So I'll get receipts from customer number 11 or those greater than 10,000. Let me display that for you. So you notice this isn't customer 11 but the amount's over 10,000. This one's customer 11 and less than 10,000. Notice it, it's an or. All of these need to be from customer 11 or the amount will be over 10,000. And You do that if you put that on two different lines. So those are two things to watch out for when you're doing a query to make sure you get the right answer. All right, let's go to the third practice query. Create, create a list of customers where either the first name begins with MA or the last name begins with BL or the last name begins with CL. Display in the final query these fields in this order, customer number, first name, and last name. All right, to do this, I'm going to need my customer table and I'll bring that in. And I'm going to delete that. And so I need to have customer number, first name, and last name. All right, I run that. Looks good. But now I have all this different criteria. So I need to have it either the first name begins with MA. We're going to start with just that piece. So how do I get the first name to begin with MA? Well, if I come down to first name, if I type in MA like that, it's going to try to look up and show me if it equals MA. Well, that's not what I want. So I'm going to have to use this function like MA. All right, I run that and I still don't get anything. That's because it's still looking for just this specific, that the first name is only Ma. So one thing I can do is put an and and a star, which means return everything, and now it's giving me all first names that begin with MA. And you can see that those pop up right there. 
All right, so I got that first criteria back. So customer first name begins with MA. Now notice it says either or. So this is not an and, it's an or. The last name begins with BL. So we'll go and do that. The last name begins with BL. All right, so I don't want to put it on the same criteria line because that's an and, so I need it down here. It's going to be very similar. Like and then BL and a star, the wild card. Let's see if that one works. So now I've got first names that start with MA. I've got those. Or the last name starts with BL. So Blackhurst, Black, Blake, etc. Okay? So I'm getting closer. I need this final criteria. Again, notice there's another or. The last name begins with CL. Now there's a couple ways to do this. One, I can come down to this line and just like before, add in. The, the like on that line. All right, if I run that, you can see the last name begins with CL. Right there, I picked up Clausen and Clausing. Another thing I can do is instead of having these listed on two rows, is I can put them on one. To do this, I type in or, and then I need to re repeat like, and then type in my criteria. And you need notice Access puts these nice quotes around it, so it takes care of that for me. So when I run this, I now get it, and you get the same answer, the CL. So you can put these on different lines or the same line, just depending on what you prefer. Now those are the three examples. I want to show you one more thing, that there is a lot of different criteria to be aware of. This web page up here on, on the Office website, goes over and reviews some of the things we talked about in the introduction to query criteria. You'll notice also here are all the different criteria um, things to learn. So if I click on criteria for text memo and hyperlink fields, it'll take me down the page and it's going to have all sorts of different things in here about rules if you want to exactly match a value. It'll show you how to do it. If you do not want to match a value, you need to use not. You can use like and, and then the wild card. Okay, and there's just lists and lists and lists of this. So you can see that there's these same lists for all of these different field types. Now rather than memorize those, what I recommend is click on this, go down and review a few, and be aware of what's possible, and then bookmark this web page. And when you need to answer a question like that, you can come back and review it. A lot of it you'll start to pick up after you've done some querying, but just as a great reference, this website does a really nice job of showing you all the different criteria you can put in. So to summarize, uh, if you want to restrict the number of records that are displayed, you can come down here into criteria. If it's on the same line, it's and. If it's on a separate line, it's an or. And then you can reduce the, the set that returns from running a query by putting in the appropriate criteria.